Another thing that I wanted to talk about while we're waiting for somebody, I talked about how in the draft, if you hold strong, then by the middle of second pack, everybody will bail and find their second color and then get desperate to find the colors, the second color cards, and they'll start passing you more, you know, they'll look at the lightning strike next to the, what, thrag tusk, and they'll be like, okay, I need to get some of this green in here. This is the reason that I took the green, was so I could play big, awesome effects like this. Uh, I'm going to take this green card, and now you're getting past lightning strikes, and then by the last pack, they're like praying to get a good green rare, and you're just getting all the good red cards. Um, I also wanted to mention that if you happen to have a draft cube group that you hang out with, you got to think about it almost like a poker strategy, where you have to know your opponents and know that they know you, and let me see. Not the greatest hand. We don't really have anything to do too early. All we have is burn. Do we want to mulligan and try and get one of our early drops? I mean, we do have a lot of stuff to do. But we have no consistent pressure. I think we're going to keep because he kept. And we're on the draw. But when you're playing with a group of drafters all the time, uh, they the same thing starts happening. Oh, that was just what we wanted. Uh, the same thing starts happening with them as what I was talking about earlier, and that is, they uh, they kind of give up on the color of red altogether. This is great. This is just what we wanted this hand to have our opponent. Oh yes. Uh, I don't really feel like walking into whatever little counter spell that they have right now with my walking ballista. I might try and wait on four because it's not like getting that one mana de one one down right now is gonna do all this great pressure. I'll just wait until they have a turn where it looks clean. Impulse is fine. I have no reason to start using burn spells or anything. I will eventually have an uncounterable four damage spell, which a lot of the time is a very useful thing against a deck like this. But the fact that I'm going into turn three, turn four without having played anything, and they're doing, they're hitting multiple colors of land drops, and casting instants that help them cycle through their deck is not a good sign for my deck right now. Still multiple colors of land drops, full Esper basics, they're going slick on me. I used to play with a guy, oh man, just draw all the cards, dude. Are you trying to reanimate on me? Is that what's going on here, bro? Does this do any anti-reanimation things? Four damage to target creature, no. Tezamok Primal Hunter and Inferno Titan. Alrighty. Now that we know that that's what's going on, do we need this? Do we know? I mean, if there's just a reanimation spell coming next turn, then we're just sunk anyway, so. You can get a little board presence out there here. And then he's going to play an Inferno Titan and kill both of our guys. So we made sure that that would get full value for him after giving him a land only. Terastodon. Okay. He is most definitely casting reanimation spells because every creature in his deck costs six or more. Cannot six. Stupid walking ballista taking away my six value. So when you get with a group of guys that all know that you're the guy that's going to play the red deck and that you stick with it and that you have the pure strength of will to stay strong until the end, then uh, they really have a choice. That do we want? Do I want to basically completely sacrifice my chance at having an awesome deck? Don't have enemy dead. Don't have enemy dead. Don't have enemy dead. All right. You followed. You did what I asked. You did not have enemy dead. I guess I could. I could have sacrificed my walking ballista and gotten it back with zero counters on it. Boom. Alright, well at least we made sure that he got full value out of that, so that's good. A lightning bolt would be great. 
That is not a lightning bolt. I mean, I can kill it with two spells next turn. After taking a Jillian. Hopefully that's the only reanimation spell he has. I two for one myself next turn and just move on with my life. I don't think I need to uh, throw a 2-1 out there right now. I'm going to wait and see if I can get some Horde Wing action or something with that. He might have a chance to bounce back sometimes. I mean, he has drawn a lot of cards, but he drew a lot of giant creatures, that's for sure. So there's a chance that we're going to be able to... God, Search Rise Kanta is not good for me. I think we're going to lose this game, but you never know. Being able to two, my, two for one myself with a lightning bolt last turn would have been pretty nice, and then be able to move on with my life. Maybe no attack? Attack? Alright, it happens. Okay. 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 Tap your mana. Tap your blue mana. Oh boy. Okay. So his only other reanimation spell needs him to have a, a freaking creature in play. But if I kill this and he has any creature, I am in trouble. What does one do? What does one do? I mean, you go for it, right? We know that he has one creature that he can't possibly cast out of the three cards in his hand. Alright, that part of the plan worked. Now, don't have a creature, you son of a gun. I kept this because we can sometimes get rid of his uh, recurring nightmare with it. No creature, no creature, no creature, no creature, no creature, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Mm. Not a creature. Oh, heart. <laughs> so many reanimation spells and giant creatures. Yep, I take three. I could draw a lightning bolt and kill it again. He definitely doesn't have another creature if he went for all that. I don't think he has any regular sized creatures. I think he just has card drawing, reanimation, and gigantos, which is a really good way to be, but not the greatest. <laughs> Well, I'm dead next turn, unless somehow... We can get him to be stupid. So you gotta give him a chance to be stupid. I learned that from one of my friends, I'm not gonna drop any names, but he's in the Hall, hall of Fame. He always told me, I was like, man, why didn't you scoop? Like, how did you manage to pull that game out? And he would always say something along the lines of, like, you know, Davey, come on, man. Give him one more chance. To, let's back it up and give him one more chance to think about it. Alright, I lose. Probably should have mulliganed that hand. Need need early pressure. Do I have anything that's really good? At, I have to control the creature, right? Yeah. Cough, no. Decast, no. This, no. I mean... Armageddon would be pretty good against them, but 
just gonna go for it. We get to see what it's like to be on the play one time. Yes, I would. Draw a good hand. I mean, I've seen worse. I've seen better. <laughs> but if he doesn't have any little creatures and we're going to start two in him every turn. Yes, mulligan, tons. We like it when you mulligan. Put it on the bottom. It's not what you need. On top, every time, luckiest opponents. Alright, time for them to... Inferno Titan, I know what that card does. So you got no cards out of that. Come on, another creature. Okay, we'll take it. What are we trying to get to here? This is six, seven, eight, nine. Why did I play this card? Pretty sure I thought it was like one of those overload type of things, you know? Search for Iskanta, also no benefit to you. Since I know that he has no or very little small creatures in his deck, I might burn him here so that my Exquisite Firecraft can be good. And we're just trying to get it in as fast as we can, save our mana. Boom, boom. Now we're talking. Let me read what this guy does. Beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1 1. Whenever a Rebel Master attacks, it gets plus 1 plus 0 for each other attacking Goblin. Okay. Always yield to that. That was a great card to draw to help put the pressure on. Always yield to that. Thing in the Ice. Alright, Thing in the Ice is not exactly what we're looking for, but we got a solution to it sitting in our hand. Go ahead and tap out for your thing in the ice. You're definitely not putting that thing in the graveyard, are you? I think I'm going to side in that extra one drop that gets the plus one, plus one counters. Just to have a little extra presence. Maybe take out the fight with fire. So I don't really think I'm going to be casting it for eight very often. I don't know, I'm halfway there. Compulsive research is definitely allowed for you to tap out for that. I'm pretty sure you're dead now. Terastodon Inferno Titan. Trigger time. Oh, you put those sticks in the wrong order on the on the stack. Shut up. There we go. All right, out with fire, with fire, fight with fire. I mean. I think we have enough stuff that kills, maybe, maybe this member is, no, no, fight with fire. Fight with fire, go bye-bye. Bomad Courier comes in. Torchfiend goes bye-bye. Jackal Pup comes in. Stone Cork Marble comes in. And... I think I'll take out Ch Chandra, because she's not really helping us go fast or killing anything that's in our way. She's kind of like a long gamer. Maybe, what did I take out? Cough is pretty, pretty hammerful. Torch Fiend, instead of Abbot of Carol Keep. Nah. Okay, I like this. We're going to go for this. You saw what happens when we play first. We're unbeatable. We've only gotten it once because we never win a flip. 
we will allow this hand. It's not a great hand, but I think it could potentially be a hand that beats my opponent. It's got the things that we want and the things that he has a lot of difficult stopping. A lot of difficulty stopping. That was not exactly the draw that we were looking for, but what are you going to do? Turn three, we'll be able to lightning bolt something and pump some stuff up. Come on. Trigger time. Always you. Play something with three toughness. Or just have two swamps and have to say go. I'm good with that as well. Seeming pretty easy so far. We would probably like for them to not draw any lands anytime soon. But we're really close to being able to kill a thing in the ice if we have to. Yes! Pure skill! See how hard that I wish for them to have these difficulties and then they happen, right? That's, that doesn't, you know, you gotta make these things happen for yourself by wishing really hard. Doing proactive things, like wishing as hard as you can. And I'm pretty sure that as of them missing that last land drop, this one's pretty much over. If we have a Dark Dweller, we haven't seen any counter spells out of them. We have Burst Lightning ready to cast with Kicker. We have two creatures that they have to deal with. And they could kill both of our creatures with the Natarka because it's just that broken. But they didn't draw a land, they're going to scoop. No, they drew a land, but it was a swamp. They were just laughing at themselves, thinking how unlucky they are. You got it. Kill both my guys. I presume. Nothing goes by, so I'm not casting it yet. But it seems like we have a pretty good path to victory here. We have a large menace creature that casts lightning bolt. Seems difficult for them to win. Seems rather difficult for them to win. You have a second blocker and a way to counter a burn spell. Flying first strike. Liberator of Malakir comes into play, put a plus one plus one counter on each other. Attack and creature control. Alright, so no you don't. Land, just in case, I don't even know. Castle Kicker. Target. One, two, three, four, five. Champion! Alright, so, you see, it's all about dealing as much damage as fast as you can with a red deck. That's my, that's my game plan. So, let's see if we can go ahead and 3-0 in our first... I can't believe we lost a game. So disappointed in ourselves. Our first one that we've played in this cube format. At least I know, because I've already won two rounds, I get to make another one for you. We got ourselves a one drop and a bunch of, and a two drop and a bunch of burn spells. Sounds good to me. It's kind of what I'm always looking for. Kept seven. Gosh, it's luck sack. Okay, we are going to burn that. I always burn that. If 
I mean, there's just a lot of times people keep hands that they're absolutely counting on their every bit of the mana that they see in their opening hand being there for them for the entire game. And it's just, they're stupid. It's not how magic works at all. I think I'm just going to go ahead and get this guy down so that in future turns I can maybe destroy an artifact if I need to, if we want to run into something real tough. But I can get a 2-1 two, two down and leave a bolt open, or I can just go ahead and spend all my mana. This, uh, you search, and then she flips, and she's a 2-2. Two, two. Gotcha. Sacrificing three damage, but it allows me to deal two damage and it gets a potential planeswalker off the board. And they are gonna have to play another blocker, or else they're gonna take four next turn. And I have removal for all their blockers, unless it's Thrun, in which case I probably just scoop and lose the game. Jins von Wachmut. He's taking it. Like a champ, he takes it. Alright, Jins. You might be in trouble here, buddy. One gigantic thing could cause me some problems, though. I do have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in my hand. Hey, look at that. How much did I say that I have in my hand? We'll take a couple turns, but I can finish it off with an uncounterable one. And if you place a four toughness creature, I can just collect a defiance next turn and then exquisite fire grab the turn after. How do you wish to lose, my friend? Gain seven life. Okay. And then put a creature in your hand. Okay. If it's really, really broken, I'm going to make you discard your hand. Drag Tusk. Okay. Probably going to deal a bunch of damage to my opponent and make him discard his hand. If I draw a land, doesn't matter. You went and got your best thing in your whole deck against me, and I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of it. Boom. Gay is Cradle too. Woo! Okay. We got rid of some good stuff there. I mean, they probably drew into some good stuff, but we definitely got rid of some good stuff. Wow, man. They would have crushed us if we didn't kill those things earlier on. Mooly dooly, we can handle. Play a forest with a forest on top.
trying to figure out exactly what I want to do. Pretty sure I just want to kill this planeswalker. We're gonna attack first. And blocks, and then I get the joy of completely clearing his board. Alright, dude, I know you have a forest on top of your deck. Did you really have another good thing? No, you have a harmonize. That's not great for me. How many cards do you have left in your library, bro? Maybe I'll deck you instead of killing you with damage. Okay, you get a 2 1. Probably not the best way I could have played that. I probably should have played PZ, smashed a creature of his. Oh well. No, Ambush Viper. Alright, we're at two. Do we have a red necro we can draw? That is large. That's large. We'll get out of, out of hand quick. Of course he has a land, because all he has is lands. So he's going to have a land every turn for the rest of the game. Kill one and make a creature. I think I would rather wait and let him swing with his six and keep a four back. Or swing with his ten and keep a four back, whatever. Okay. Alright, so my video cut out. Uh in the top corner, but I'm making you guys a new one to replace it rather than just putting a frowny face over it. I just got attacked for 10. Taking that with the plan of being able to get a whole bunch of triggers when I cast my spell, kill a 4-4, be able to... He's low enough that after the trigger he's going to block with his bird on the uh, on what I attack with. And sh I think I might play a walking ballista this turn. I'm not 100% sure. What I'm going to do with that right now, kind of just thinking about, uh, right now, just kind of thinking about casting this fight with fire on this 4-4. Four four. I know that that's what I want to do because I'm going to get a trigger from one guy, which causes another guy, and you know, we love trigger time. Um, and it's going to give me a blocker for the other 4-4. Four four. It's going to enable me to be able to attack with my 2-1 and deal some damage to my opponent which is all good stuff. And if I wanted to, I could also pump with Porphyros, God of whatever, Thunder, maybe? Looks like maybe Lava Mountains, judging by it? I, can't, I don't know. So, Walking Ballista, I mean, can play it right now, kill a bird, get through for two. Um, I feel like I might have I also get the trigger off four furrows, so that's the reason why I wound up doing that. Sorry about the fact that, again, I don't know exactly what was going through my head all the time because of the fact that my webcam froze and I had to add this part on at the end. Now I know I'm smashing because I might as well kill a bird if you can kill a bird, right? You never know when they might have one little splashed thing in, in their deck. It looks pretty mono green to me. And we know he's going to have forests because we set him up to have forests for the whole rest of the game. And we could tell by the way that he played his hand out that all he ever has is forests. As I said earlier, so we we can expect a fresh 4-4 every turn. 
And I think right now, from what I remember, I am crossing my fingers and saying, come to me, please, um, hordling outburst. I would really like a hordling outburst right now. There will be plenty of triggers to deal with everything, and I really doubt that he... Like, there's no reason to be blocking with either one of my one toughness creatures here. If he has a plus four spell somehow, then he's got me. But even giant growth doesn't do the trick. And then I just rip like a true champion. Uh, for those of you who are my friends and play against me and sometimes lose to me in cube matches or other kinds of matches, or the guys that I used to money draft with that would just assume that I would 03 all the time and then I would show up with the occasional surprise winning record, um, it was mostly because of draws like that. That Rabble Master right there, that was a pretty good one. Can I get two triggers off a of reverse and then be able to merc my opponent out? Easy game. Because we also have the extra damage on the Walking Ballista, not that we even need it. And the green meanie over here is going to have to scoop him up. And it seems easy to beat him if we can beat him. That Oh my gosh, you had forests in your hand. You're kidding me. We've been talking about that all game, that he had a forest in his hand. That's one thing that you'll notice if you ever bounce around from, like, I'm a, I'm a poker player. I'm a school teacher, most of all, but I also play poker in the summers, and I used to play back when online was legal. I played a lot after school, and I would say my money was probably about equal between the two, making school... That's not true. IRS, just kidding. I only make my money from school, and I play poker just for fun, but... Uh, People, when you come back to Magic after being at poker for a while, trying to figure out reads on people, you realize that everyone is just a tell box and a half in Magic. Um, they'll, like, draw their card and go like <laughs> that. Or they'll draw their card and all of a sudden start reading, and, you know, I'm pretty sure you didn't just draw a forest if you're, if you're reading your card. So now we're rooting for our opponent to mulligan like we always do. That's what we're focusing our energies on. We like our hand. Don't get me wrong, it's important to like your hand, but the uh, most important thing that we're doing right now is... And it didn't work. This guy's the luckiest ever, keeping seven. We got a one drop, a two drop, a burn spell. We have a burn spell ready if they had the turn one. But I'm guessing after they don't have a turn one mana dork for us to kill, we're going to get in for two, and then we're going to be able to kill a turn two mana dork because we saw a Jiraga and uh, Rafelos. And I remember correctly, that was my plan all along, um, but the Rafelos does come, and I decided that I'm not going to just throw a, wake, a walking ballista at it, instead I'm just going to mark it out and swing. I guess I could have offered them the chance to trade, they're never going to do it, though. Everybody everybody here in some cube match has played a turn two, has played Forest, Go, Forest, uh, Rafelos, and all you're doing inside of your head right then... Probably also with your body language and your facial expression, since we were talking about that earlier. All you are doing is just sitting there thinking, please let me play this other land. And have six mana so I can start doing all my awesome giant green things. So, Hordling Outburst, as always, one of the greatest rips in, uh, in Legacy Cube. You wouldn't think it, but I really can't think of a lot of times that I've been sad to draw that card. And, you know... Cool. We learned two of the cards that you have in exchange for six of your life and a card from your hand. And now we have three more creatures to replace it with. And dragon coming next turn and we can destroy an artifact if you play it. And we can kill something with two toughness if we have to with walking ballista. Or we can save it to be burned later on, just saying. <sighs> Doesn't sound too bad to me. Sounds like a good situation to be in. Sounds like we're about to trophy this mug. But there are lots of bad things that our opponent can play. As always, if my opponent plays a Thrawn... Oh my goodness gracious. Yes. As I was saying earlier. Draws like this. Draws like this are why I show up and surprise people. That's right. It's over. Champion. I am the champion. Um, it was a really good time drafting. I'm definitely going to do it again. I mean, you see, I, I made play points overall on this deal, so... I'm definitely going to be drafting some more. I'm going to be recording it. I'm still working out the kinks on making this really smooth so I can make a whole lot of videos with my new rig and everything. But I'm starting to get it all figured out. Things are... There's a, uh, one YouTube video at a time I've been going through and uh, 
sort of figuring out how I can uh, make things better, how I can make things easier on myself. If the webcam stops working all of a sudden, how do I fix it? These sorts of things are what I've been looking up. I learned the answer to that. Might be occasionally my webcam might be a little lower quality, but overall it's going to be what you want. And uh, I'm going to make the best stuff for you that I possibly can. Thank you. Bye. Make sure you subscribe and like because more of this is coming. Make sure you turn on the notifications because of the fact that uh, this is in the background. This is me cursing at the computer because I found out that it was all frozen. And make sure that you subscribe and like and turn on notifications because I'm going to start coming live sometimes. And I'll probably start twitching sometime soon. But I'll let you know about all that in the future. Thanks.